What is church history? Where do I find resources on church history? Why would I study history to begin with? These are all valid questions that many of us have. This series aims to answer these questions. Before we delve into historical events of church development, I want to shed light on the benefits we can learn from church history. Church history is the study of past events, councils, and affairs pertaining to the church. We learn about historical events from multiple resources. For example, we learn about the birth of the early church from the book of Acts. We can learn about the persecuted church from Roman records, the writings of historians such as Josephus and the writings of the early church fathers, such as Ignatius of Antioch. We can learn about the liturgical life of the church from individuals such as Justin the Martyr. We can learn about the expansion of the church during the time of the apostles and beyond their times from Irenaeus of Lyons's Against the Heresies or the ecclesial history of the church by Eusebius. We can learn about the councils of the church from their written minutes or the writings of the fathers who participated in these councils, like Gregory the Theologian, who wrote about his experience at the Council of Constantinople in 381. Many other resources can be found to explore church history, but I will stop listing them as you will see them throughout the episodes of this series. The question of why study church history might still be going through your mind. The study of church history gives you an idea of how the church handled her affairs throughout the centuries. There are things you can learn to emulate in the event and there are things you can learn to avoid. For example, you can learn to imitate Paul and Barnabas, who despite having a conflict, did not quit service but rather continued on their separate routes and brought the gospel to different locations. You can learn to avoid mingling the church with the political world when you read about the Council of Chalcedon, where the fight for power put on a theological mask and left the church in schism, and the list goes on. Studying history can help you identify the cultural elements versus the dogmatic elements of your expression of orthodoxy. For instance, the fathers of the church were able to utilize the language of their culture to formulate doctrines such as that of the Trinity, Christology, or Soteriology. In doing so, they were able to use the culture of the time without conforming to the evils associated with paganism. This can be a lesson in how we deal with our own culture, whether it's Western or Eastern. Gregory of Nyssa, in his book Life of Moses, where he was likely influenced by Origin of Alexandria, tells his readers that the Israelites plundered the Egyptians in as much as they took gold and silver from them to use it later on for the building of God's tabernacle. Likewise, Christians can use secular philosophical language to formulate their orthodox theology. That being said, in studying how the fathers spoke the language of their time to spread and simplify the message of the gospel, we might be able to further spread the gospel using the very same strategy. 